That's hot snake. The sock. Is that a hot snake in your pocket, or are you just happy to see? Yeah. Hot snake got cake. Hot snake for weapons. Yo, that hot snake got (laughs) fucking cheeks, dude. God damn. (laughs) But it's it's a sock full of rice inside of. Lord, I'm about to bust. (laughs) But you microwave it, and it's warm, so you can put it on your neck when you got neck problems. I I have have one of those, but it's a fucking like a wash rag sewed in half. Oh yeah. My mom has made them like my entire life. And I don't know if it's like, a, I don't know if it's one of those things that I assume is a normal thing and then totally get roasted. I think later they after are. It isn't. But <laughs> no, I think they're normal. It's called they're a corn they're bag normal. where it's a bag. Oh. It's full of corn. And you, I mean, it's the same concept, but yeah, like corn sure. we just have rice life. and not corn. What like, what, what the fuck kind of corn? Welcome back, and we are what's up, YouTube? Here. What's up? It's your boys. It's your boys. Uh, we're here to talk about the best story and writing of the year, of which we'll see how much overlap there is. Um, I, I think that there's one a, entry. I think there's yes, a ton of incredibly good standout ones, but I'm afraid that they might overlap a bit. But we'll see how it goes. Ryan, what's your number three? Uh, number three, and I think this is just for world building alone, is going to be Carto. I love the idea of kind of you keep going to these different islands that all have different uh, cultures and backgrounds, and they're all different with different things going on, and the uh, their different customs and stuff play into the gameplay of the game, and I think that's really cool. I don't know if the story ever goes anywhere interesting, but the world building itself is really cool. I liked what little I, I again, I, I enjoyed what little I played of it, but I also just don't feel compelled to play any more of that game. But I like what I saw. Good game. Um, so my number three, I'll just go ahead and just rip the bandit off, get it out of the way now. Um, not necessarily for story, because I think the story itself is kind of mediocre at best but the writing of hades brings it in at a solid number three um all all of the dialogue all of the characters that that the the main like author for the game um was on twitter like kind of talking about like how much was in there like it it is insane how much dialogue that there is and despite fully voice acted too yeah fully voice acted despite doing like like 30 runs of it i feel like i'm not hearing duplicate dialogue for the most part um, outside of the like, oh, which sister is this going to be? Like, that's maybe the only example. I, I feel like every single time I'm hitting a boss, I'm hearing something new from Zagreus. Um, I like how Zag has a witty one-liner even for his own deaths. Like, I got killed by the Minotaur once, and he was walking out of the pool. But I was like, I got the horns. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I, I, I definitely think that, that game's strongest element is its writing, um, and it, it. I, I just think it's fantastic. And hey, Supergiant writes good stuff. Who would have thought? So with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and move it over to Matt, who hopefully has scribbled something out by this point. I have one entry. Okay. And it is my number one. Well, do you want to wait? Yes. yes. Okay. Jason, go ahead, Jason. What do you have? <laughs> uh, my number three was Miles Morales. I think the characters were written well. I think it made me give a shit more than I normally would just playing a Superman or a superhero beat shit up game. Superman, Miles Morales. I, I think that like, again, the main Batman, story is kind of, oh. you know, lacking, like, you know, it yeah. is what it is. It's a superhero story, but again, the character writing in it is mm-hmm. really, really good. And it's, it, yeah. it was so good. I don't want a Peter Parker game ever again. Just give me I liked, more of I like the first one just fine. Well, the first one was good. The first one's fine. But Miles but like, is phenomenal. But Miles is, yeah, exactly. Like, I think Miles is Miles great. beyond. Um, I also, I don't know if there's like really another good moment to like bring this up, but like the voice acting in it is really, really good. Um, mm. I, I remember during the final segments, there is a point where Rio Morales' voice actor like screams um, yeah. And it is one of the like most visceral, visceral. mother oh, screams man. that I have ever heard. It's like genuine terror. Reason. Like it is, it's a relative like emotional kind of like final sequence. But that moment specifically, just went like, oh fuck. Um, but it, the whole the, the all of the voice acting is really really good, and it, it's yeah. Miles is ridiculously endearing. Um, we'll talk about it more. We'll talk about it more. 
<laughs> Hunter, what's your number three? I only have one. Uh, well, Ryan, what's your number two? <laughs> uh, my number two is Hades. Uh, pretty much for the same, I mean, the same reasons you had said. Um, but it was like I had played the game for 30 minutes and Amara like walked through the room when I was doing like a flashback sequence or something. And she stood by and watched the stuff. And I stopped playing for a few minutes while she was making food so she could finish watching the scene uh, for like a game she had no real idea about. She was just seeing one sequence of it, but that was enough to grab her and make her want to watch it and me want to like, oh yeah, I mean, this seems really cool. You should watch this. It's a cool game. Good writing. Good, writing. good stuff. Well, it's a good game. Uh, uh, yeah. Carto. Carto. <laughs> um, so my number two, honestly, it, th- I, my number one is a, a bit of a left field for me, but my number two is it's Ghost of Tsushima. And while I did find, I actually think that the story of Ghost of Tsushima, in addition to like the individual kind of character arcs is really good. And while I don't think that Ghost of Tsushima is necessarily bringing anything original to the table, I think it's a really good, like just story of death of old ideas to make wave for new ones. Ah, um, so it is Japanese Red Dead. Yeah, it, it's Japanese Red Dead. Um, it's it's uh, my it would probably be number one for me if I actually played that game stealthy, like it was in they're expecting me to. Um, because the the like the huge the big conflict in addition to, like the Mongols invading the island is Jin saving Japan by any means necessary and then people like his uncle um and the the um uh the emperor like absolutely wanting to stick by traditions you know you fight your enemy with honor you do all this other stuff like you don't poison them you don't use these stealthy tactics whereas Jin is more like it's do or die motherfuckers yeah, like we will face down. it's it's like we face extinction if we don't do this and they're it, it, it's it, it's like it sounds generic as hell but they make it work in a really really mm-hmm. really appealing way where i gave an incredible shit about it and ryan and matt do you, do you care about spoilers we talked briefly about it earlier uh, you I can go ahead i and probably spoil won't it. play it's, it it's gonna be like years until i have a chance to actually play this game so the final boss of the game is your uncle um who mm. after oh. you have been dishonored and disowned um he cuts you out of the inheritance he does all this other shit you have insulted him by like the entire time he's like trying to bring you back to his side because it's not like a thing of i hate you like we have different like like oh i'm the good guy you're the bad guy it is a matter of we have different philosophies and it's a conflict of ideals where he wants you to be the traditionalist and you are doing your own thing uh, throughout the course of the game by you defying all of these people, you have told the people of Japan that they don't have to obey the emperor. And I think that um, the, for the final boss is him. And at the very end of the game, when you beat him, you have the option of killing him or sparing him and he begs you to kill him. And I went with the kill option because that's, I think the good. I think that's the the good thing to do in that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, another just like story beat about it that I really, really, really fucking enjoyed is, so pretty much the entire time Jin is doing his stuff, you know, doing his like Ghost of Tsushima shit, um, and it's always like the better option to do. It's like, oh, Jin is getting shit done. Jin's doing the right thing. There's a point where Jin goes and gets poison developed that he starts using on the Mongols, and after he starts using that on him, the Mongols synthesize the formula to it, and then they start using it to completely fuck up everyone. And it's the one time of the game where it's just like, Jin, if you hadn't been doing this shit, this wouldn't have happened. It's like the only time it kind of cracks back at him. And I wish there was more of that. Yeah, but also if he hadn't poisoned them, then their entire, like, squad would have been brutalized. Yeah, like it's so it, was, it, it had to happen, but it obviously had negative repercussions. Um, there's the shit with like his childhood friend uh, Whoa, betraying spoilers. you, and yeah, um, fuck that guy, fuck that, that guy. Never have I wanted twist. to murder a dude so bad. Um, like it, it's, I think the thing about Ghost of Shima is, is it's not that original, but it's incredibly effective. And mm-hmm. I, and I it's really... got a Kurosawa mode. Yeah, yeah, it mode. Like, I, mode's stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, but Kurosawa is cool. I, I found myself incredibly surprised at how invested I became in the story. Like during the last arc of it, I was ignoring side content just because, like, no, I want to see where this fucking goes. Like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm invested in it. 
Yeah, but I, I did. Love. I did. I did less and less side stuff as I went. Like I did, like a shitload of side stuff in the first chunk of the island. Probably and like I, I probably did like five to ten hours of side stuff on the first chunk of the island. A little bit in the middle, and then like nothing at the end. I did like the last third pretty much in one, just straight shot through. And I think like after the first chunk is where the story really kind of gets going. Like that's mm-hmm. when your your buddy betrays you, you rescue your uncle. And because I totally thought it was going to be a matter of like, oh, they're going to keep moving the uncle back and back and back and whatever. But it's like, no, you just fucking no, we're going to go and we're going to be we're going to be brothers in arms. I'm going to adopt you as my son. Like it, it's it's super compelling, and I did not expect it out of fucking sucker punch. I was um, the exact opposite where I could not give a single shit about God, that bums me out. <laughs> it was the most generic thing. Well, maybe if like, they gave I it like a tournament care. arc, it would be better. That would somehow improve it, yes. <laughs> like, but, I, I, when you say Japanese Red Dead, like, it's a lot of the same vibes. Of, again, not identical because Death of the West is a, a different fundamental concept. But right. It, it, it has a lot of those... Um, vibes to me and i i really enjoyed it and i really didn't think i was going to like the the last fight with the uncle was the only part of the story i could actually be like yes i do actually enjoy this i i think like in terms of like i i don't think that they made the mongol leader like a compelling villain at all i didn't even know his name for half the game he's he's just generically a douchebag like they kind of do this he's generic big brutish douche like yeah, and none it's... of none of the twists other than the Mongols using the poison against you was like surprising to me. Like, oh, see, I thought every, I, I, every I legitimately twist didn't expect did. the friend betrayal. Yeah, I was I was caught off guard by the betrayal. As soon as I saw him, it was like I got a lot of dudes to feed. He was like, okay, he's gonna betray us, and then, like the you, blacksmith... you watch a lot more anime than me. <laughs> and like the blacksmith guy, I was like, he's gonna die. Oh yeah, I knew the blacksmith guy was gonna yeah. die. That that shot is called. That shot that is so a... fucking called. <laughs> it was a bummer um, though. Yeah, and but that's the thing is like it was predictable as hell. But when it happened, I was like, ah, fuck! Like the fact that he knows that he's gonna have to go and tell his sister was just like this this feeling of like dread. Where I, again, it was it's not original, but it's incredibly compelling. But he didn't have to go tell her sister. She came to him and was like, "Hey, where's my brother?" Yeah, but you would have had to say something. <laughs> and then no, all started... he had to do was stealth out of there. But you chose to be honorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just shows up. And she's like, "Where's my brother?" And you just kind of turn around, and there's a head <laughs> corpse on the ground behind you. And she's like, "Yeah." I don't know. <laughs> but and again, the reason it's probably not my number one is it leans so heavily into assuming you did a bunch of stealth shit, whereas I that's did. How you're supposed to play it. Fuck that! The combat's too fun. The stealth still, does suck. Like, you still do a ton of combat. Yeah, but what if I did more combat? What if I could do a <laughs> confrontation every single camp? See, I would usually stealth to get like a, a chunk of them out of my way, and then I would hop down and combat. Yeah, st- stealth last... until it goes wrong, and then go loud. Nah, loud whole fucking time, baby. <laughs> I only stealthed if that was the thing. It was like, and I liked buddy from above or whatever. And it was like, okay. I liked the stealth because it wasn't like annoying stealth. Like it was pretty easy to be stealthy. And I'd so- also just, I'd also just come off about thirty hours of playing spider-man and killing people the exact same way <laughs> that combat is more fun than sekiro i want to do it at all times <laughs> but yeah, anyway, com- the combat is really good that's the um are, the duels are fun we'll talk more about ghost of tsushima the red Jason, Jason, this has nothing to do two. with the story yeah what's your number two <laughs> my number two is hades all right hunter what's your number so, two we've already talked about it a number bit one. Oh yeah <laughs> yeah hades good Ryan, hit me with your number one. Number one. Hit man. Nine years in the making. Kentucky <laughs> Route Zero. <laughs> Finally, Finally get released. Day like it is, it's just one of those things that maybe it's just, I know a lot of people like it, but it's just very specifically my thing. I love magical realism. I love uh, Americana stuff. Like everything that they did in that game is just like, because each chapter does something new and every time they go to a new thing, it's just like, yep, that's, that's my thing. I fucking love that. Like, give me more of this. And they do. It's just a really, really fucking cool story that like, I know it's kind of already a book, but I would read it as a book. I'll play it as a game. It's just really, really cool. I mean, you would hope those narrative driven games have a strong narrative. And I, I really want to, I really want to, sometimes play they don't though. 
sometimes they're really bad sometimes somebody releases a dear esther or something like that oh oh, fuck it's so bad but yeah no uh kentucky route zero super fucking cool super good um hunter is gonna give the loudest possible fucking groan with this um well let me get ready for it then okay yeah brace yourself so um my number one is i it is a as as you can maybe guess at this point based on other things that i've said in the past um i enjoy meta narrative i think that while it is incredibly easy to do badly i really really like it when it's done well and what do you do when you are remaking a game that has probably the Oh, I know most, exactly most spoiled say. thing in the entire history of video games um mm-hmm. what do you do when you're remaking that game and you still want the game to carry emotional depth and you know have things like, and basically have people give a shit when they know what's coming um so you make a game about about the game that you're remaking um final fantasy 7 remakes story is about the story of final fantasy seven and how it is breaking and how it is falling apart because in this remake you are like playing through the events, obviously like the main story beats, but then shit just kind of keeps going differently. Like it's, it doesn't happen the exact way that it happened in the original game. And there are like the demons and like ghosts of fate that are doing everything they can to keep everything the way it's supposed to. It's literal time ghosts. Literal time ghosts. <laughs> literal, like not metaphorical. They're fucking the time dementors. Motherfucking stupidest thing I have seen in a story. Uh, I, I, I think love that it. sounds cool. I fucking love it. Sephiroth Maybe not has... the physical representation of time ghosts, but the idea of it um, being all meta and shit seems cool. Sephiroth, knowing that he faces defeat in the original timeline of Final Fantasy VII, sends visions back and to his past smash. self. <laughs> sends visions to his past self to break the um, timeline. And the way that the game ends, this is the, again, this is the crux of the first game, is, is destroying the It ends the with some real Kingdom Hearts shit. And again, yeah. And, I bet that's who the time ghosts are. Um, Mickey it, Donald and Sora became Time Squad. It sets it's Sora, it up Donald for and them to go, and basically they can do whatever they want with the story at this point. Um, and I also, like, in addition to that, I found a lot of the characters, as someone who fucking hates Final Fantasy VII, the original one, I think that they nail so much of the character stuff in it uh, to make me give a shit about them. Um, Jesse Weggs, uh, Jesse Wedge, um, Biggs, all of them. I think they're incredibly good. Badger for Breaking Bad voices one of the characters, which is great. Um, he voices the fat guy. They make Cloud like definitely a brooding shit ass, but like a compelling brooding shit ass. Um, I, I again, as someone who fucking hates Final Fantasy VII, I was blown away at how enthralled I was with this narrative and how much I want to see more of it. And I will, I will buy whatever fucking ever one of these they do. I want to see where they go with this. I think, I think that game being about itself makes it unbelievably interesting. And I knew Hunter would fucking hate me saying that. It's so stupid. There's a point (laughs) where you first, or where cloud first actually meets Aerith and you fight the Turk guy and Cloud's just going to fucking kill him after you beat him for whatever reason. Cloud's just going to fucking chop his head off. But then time ghosts swarm into the church and literally carry Cloud and Aerith away through a set of doors. Yeah, because that's not how it's supposed to happen. Because that's not how it's supposed to happen. Um, they also, they don't tell you that it's time ghosts until the it. very end of the game. Like, there, it's this pervasive thing of like, wait, what the fuck are these? G-? Like, other people know that like something's going on, but no one knows why it is. And then you find out at the end of the game, nah, they're time ghosts. And then you kill the time god. The ghosts will show up. Everyone will freak out and be like, why are all these ghosts around? And then as soon as they disappear, everybody forgets the time ghosts apparently happened. because Maybe the, they the, just, for, maybe they actually forget. Because they don't know. No, they don't like, forget oh, about them. They just on. never know why they're showing up. They never bring them up except when the time ghosts are there. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a bunch of other shit going on. There's the first time they show up, they just come up to sprain Jesse's ankle and then leave. Because <laughs> that's how it's supposed to happen. Then why um, didn't they just spray her ankle? <laughs> that's not how it happened. She got trapped into debris twice. 
and it didn't sprain her ankle. Time also, ghosts show up and sprain her ankle, and suddenly Cloud now has to come on the second reactor run. Just sprain her ankle in the first place. I always why, come on the first run. Why add this hour-long segment of stupid fucking time ghosts when you can just sprain her ankle? I was, fully, video games. I was fully prepared for this. Um, I also Hunter, really. Why don't you tell us how you really feel? I'm <laughs> mad that we got rid of the worst game category because this would have been <laughs> number fucking one. I uh, also really like how they keep a lot of the goofy ass PS1 shit and then put it forward with the straightest fucking face. I'm fine with that. Hell House, Hell House was, was amazing. Um, was Cloud having his fight, but it was amazing. Like Cloud having his like situationally super high or super low jumping ability. Um, God, again, I, I the fact I love I love it. I fucking love it. Um, top to bottom. Matt, hit me with your number one. How much my number stretch one. five hours of content? My number one turns out forty. I know this is going to be a shocker at this point. Uh, my number one is Miles Morales. Guy. Second yeah. only to Subnautica. Miles Morales, <laughs> um, good story and writing. It's a great game. It, the story was great. I don't remember anything about the story from the first Spider-Man. Oh, Peter Parker like, was there. Doctor Octopus is there. Yeah. Okay. Great. And Ben Osborne's a shit. Um, I, I don't like. MJ I sucks. I remember the after credit sequence. Washington from the first Spider-Man does. because I went to go watch it when we talked about it in the group chat. J. Jonah Jameson runs an InfoWars podcast. He does in the second one, too. <laughs> and he's in a Santa suit. Oh, sweet. I I just, I could talk about Miles all day long. And I will talk about it more today. Profoundly punchable CEO. Um, yeah, Miles is a great game. Uh, I absolutely love the ending of it. I thought, I thought all of the buildup to the end of it was really... It was just phenomenal. I thought it built really well. It there could have been a lot more of it. I know that we talked about this a little bit in the chat, but it the story felt really short. Like I didn't. Yeah, it's like I had no idea it was coming half. up to the end. Yeah, it was like maybe I, half as long as the first one. Yeah, like I remember going to the the last mission and it's saying like, <laughs> oh, "This is your last chance to upgrade. Are you yeah, sure you want to do this?" Which, ends. first of all, like the upgrades don't matter. So like, that's yeah, how I, I felt. Ready, I felt like that with both but, of them. I felt like they just ended. Insomniac's yeah. really good at making half a game. Yeah, so. I tell you what, they made that half a game really fucking good. Yeah, and I think that's part of why I'm so I really want more Miles content is because I, I just did I've, not get my fill. I really want DLC for it. Like I don't there, normally no DLC. I, I don't normally say that I like want to buy the season pass for something but i would I, absolutely buy a season pass for miles if they were if they would do three dlcs the way that they did for peter parker i don't think they do more miles like i i have to imagine at this point they're just making whatever spider-man 2 is i want him to fuck Haley. okay <laughs> we want the hot coffee mod exactly that he drinks upside down that's Maybe an awfully next- hot coffee pot Maybe the next full game you'll play as both Spider-Mans. See, I am next really one, curious how they're going to handle that because I don't want to play a Spider-Man Spider game with Venom powers, and I don't want to play without Miles. Spider Gwen, please no. Games just in the Spider Verse. Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen. Now we're talking. Spider the cards. Game, there the we go. Game, a whole game is Miles' uncle. <laughs> okay. Hey, fuck it. No, Prowler is super is compelling. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Miles is my number one. I will talk about it more, but I don't. That's all I have to say for right now. Jason, talk about Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, do I that. I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> it's We've talked about it a lot today, and we're not done talking about it today or next time or the time after that. Maybe, well, maybe next time. Or next year or the year after that. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if it pops up much in the uh, next week's stuff. If in 2025, it shows up as the best game, not from 2019, because Ryan finally got a chance to play it. <laughs> I'll get around to playing it. Connor, uh, hit me with uh, whatever your number one is. It's just Some 80s. weeb shit. Oh. What? It's Hades. just Hades. Yeah, that's okay. That's reasonable. Because <laughs> I, was, I was looking at my list of played games this year, and I was like, well, that's a remake, that's a remake, that's a remake, that's a port, that's Hades. I mean, that was pretty much the release schedule. And then there was only like three more games on the list. I'm not going to put fucking Minecraft Dungeons for writing. I, Minecraft Steve. Why not? I was super tempted to put Yakuza Like a Dragon on here because what I, I that half of that entire fucking game that I played, the 
the right as usual the yakuza games written super duper well but fucking 80 hours fuck you like that's not okay that's not okay that's not okay it's too long it's not okay not okay look the producer played dragon quest once is like i can do this um whatever but yeah uh does anyone else have any other honorable mentions for writing i feel like we had a lot of overlap and two people here only had one game but (laughs) uh paper mario's story was pretty good i mean it's kind of that same shit but the writing was all right i think a wonderful 101 yeah, what I what I played of Immortals, the writing was fun. The Immortals. I don't know if I would say good, and I only played a couple hours of it, but the writing was enjoyable. It's one. Oh, of you're the, talking about I mean, Immortals: Phoenix Rising. Yeah, it's it's the a game. Thing. It's it's a game that is. It's it's a hey, weird, goofy kind of game, which I always really don't like. But I feel like this one does an okay job of it. But you can only have one Greek game showing up in your writing category. Yeah. Mm. Um, Them's the yeah. breaks. There's, that's, there's a lot of character overlap in those games. Best <laughs> Greek game of 2020. But that's going to do us for uh, best story and writing. Um, please join us next time where we go over my favorite category, which is best moment or sequence, where Hunter and I won't get into it at all. <laughs> <laughs>